Good afternoon, traders. I'd like to welcome you here to our recap of the NQ uh, 133 tick. Uh, volume was very thin today. Uh, rather surprised me, actually. I thought we were going to have a lot more volume. So it was actually quite a tough market. But before we get in and we analyze some of our trades, once again, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be kept up to date with the world's best trading strategies for active traders absolutely free. And if you shop around, you'll see that uh, some companies are charging thousands of dollars for the strategies that I teach you absolutely free here. Yes, if you'd like to talk to me about coaching, uh, I charge $297 per session. Uh, quite often for experienced traders, you only need one session. I've got you set up with all of the setups, the settings required, etc. And you're away. You can then watch uh, some of my more detailed video recaps, which will explain after our session, which uh, I also record for you, which will fully explain every trade setup. Now, I'm just setting up a new website and I've had um, uh, incredible problems with my email address that is on the YouTube channel. So please um, uh, excuse me for those that have been trying to email me. If you use my Gmail account for now, which is Ray ftrader at gmail.com. Any inquiries about my settings, about my coaching, etc., both uh, for personal or for corporate work. Uh, and I apologize, as most of you know, I've been away on vacation. I'm still catching up with the many emails that I've received over the last week or so. So let's now get into today's session. Now, you hear me talk about this every day, that successful trading is a game of probabilities. The market has a memory and patterns repeat themselves every day. Part of its psychology, probably 90%, 95% of it is the psychology of traders. But we've got to remember that our game, uh, what we do is we trade on probabilities and we're waiting for our key setups. Yesterday, you heard me rant and rave about how essential it is and how it's improved my trading to consider yourself a sniper, because that is what I consider myself, and it's had an incredible impact on the trading results. And you'll look at, and you'll see a couple of live, actually one live trade there we did today. Um, I actually got up very, very early in the morning to do a live session with a client. So I traded with him for about four hours, then I went to bed, get a couple of hours sleep. And just before I went to bed, I'll show you the live trade, it was a T10. But the point is, um, and I'll talk about this every single training session, we're looking for our patterns to repeat. That's what we're looking for. So patience is absolutely essential. Patience and discipline. Another really important um, factor when it comes to trading, some traders have been bamboozled by some vendors they might have bought something from in the past and said, look, your setups are too simple, but it can't work. Well, let's go back and have a look at the last hundred of them. They work every day. Is I love what Richard Branson said. Complexity is your enemy. Any fool can make something complicated. It's hard to keep things simple. Now, with my corporate clients, institutions, when you look at them, um, nearly all of the traders I work with there trade purely on price action. Some of the setups I, um, um, I can't teach you because they're proprietary, but they don't even have indicators on their charts. So it's very, very simple. So anyone that tells you anything else uh, is really just trying to make you think you've got to spend tens of, or in some cases, many, many thousands of dollars to learn the strategies. Well, that's just not the case, as you know, with most of the strategies that I teach. Simplicity is critical. So let's go and have a look at today's market. Excuse the, mar the timing down, down below here. This is on Australian time. Of course, we open up here, uh, right here. Now, as you hear me repeat every trading session, you might be a new trader, um, not one of my experienced clients looking at these charts. So therefore, uh, so excuse me to my regular clients, I'm going to say it again. I usually wait 20 minutes to half an hour before I start trading. Why? Because the market can move really quickly. Now, it was a lot slower this morning. I was surprised by how low the volume was. So let's have a look at a few trades here. So, of course, if the market opens and it's moving a lot slower, number one, just check to make sure there's no red flags. Uh, there were a couple of things happening that, uh, that I thought the market would move a lot quicker, so be cautious. But anyway, let me call these trades out to you anyway. 
So the ones that we were calling in real time when I was doing the training are already marked up. But here we had uh, an 89 bounce here. Now, as you know, this is a standalone strategy. It kicks butt basically every day. So you see we've gone up, we've gone through our uh, cyan line. Here is our 89 EMA. We've gone up, kicked back down. That was good for 15, 18 ticks, if not a little more. Uh, you would have been in on the close here. You can see the paint barber super scalper there. You're in on this candle here. Now, we had another 89 bounce right here. And this is also around the pivot. Now, let me stress this. I always get really nervous when I've got a pivot and the 89 converging at a pivot level. You'll get a lot of bouncing and a lot of abnormal moves. So be very, very cautious. But what about this one? We have the paint bar. Technically speaking, you may have had an entry. Why didn't we? Well, here, of course, we had our Z lag. We can see here that it's cyan that would have needed to have turned magenta, which it did over here. Now, I know that uh, some of our traders took this because we had a perfect double top right here. Uh, let me just mark this up. As we're talking, so we had a beautiful double top here. Now, we didn't have a, a lot of divergence on our platinum, well, virtually none here. Uh, on, on the platinum. However, our 89 was heading down slightly. So for those traders that took their double top, well taken. I didn't call that when we were in the market this morning. Uh, your entry would have been here. That was a very, very nice one. And then we had another double bottom formation right here, which was actually a counter trend. I didn't call it at the time. You had another. So you can see here we had some real support and resistance here. But let's get more along, and I want to have a look at some of these trades because we had some real chop here. One of the things uh, which we really want to watch for and to really note is where are your pivots? Because the NQs, the, uh, the ESs, and one thing I haven't said, these setups uh, work on uh, whether you're trading futures, Forex, or stocks. So these setups work on every market. One thing I do love about uh, the Forex market, of course, we generally have a lot more volatility. And I love the five range uh, charts for me personally. Uh, 13 range, which is another one I use here. We just don't, for an, as an active trader as I am, uh, I just don't get enough tr trades generally. So I've dropped because of the volume falling, I've dropped from the eight range down to the five. So one reason why I mainly now trade futures is my brokerage. My commissions are only a bit over uh, around the $4.50, $4.80 mark. So it's very, very competitive. And uh, however, one big advantage that we've got on Forex is, of course, you can trade minis, and that's great for a new trader. So getting along here, uh, we can see half an hour into the market open, we had a beautiful 89 bounce. Thank you. We had uh, a T1 set up here, and by the way, this one down here not only was at an 89 bounce, we can see here we've got a T2 set up. Now, a T2 for our newer traders is where, generally speaking, we're looking at our long-term stochastic to be overbought or oversold. In this particular case, it was overbought. Yes, I know, there is no such thing really as overbought, but let me use it for this particular setup to describe it. So we can see here we're overbought, we have a pullback of our short-term, and it's a slingshot, basically. So a T2 is a slingshot, bang, up it went. Now, what we can notice here is that we're getting fairly close to our pivot and we bounce time and time again. And we can actually see here, we had our support, uh, our resistance, I should say, a little below this particular pivot today. So this on this T1, you would have been stopped. And you can see here, we marked it up uh, in training and we were stopped on that particular trade. Here we had another 89 bounce, and the reason, I've marked that up here, and the reason we didn't enter is that we had a double top, and double tops, generally speaking, and particularly where you see your short term does not cut through the long term stochastic, you do generally have a change in trend direction, which is what, exactly what has happened here. So we had a double top, you should have been short here. We can see here we had one short signal and the reason we didn't mark that one up and we waited was we were waiting for another confirmation. Now let me explain why. 
when you are going against your 89 EMA, the 89 is very, very strong resistance. I want you to be very, very cautious. And in many cases, as this one was, this is a counter trend trade. Now, as much as we had a lower low here, this is what we actually call here and here. We call these T11s. That is where we get the paint bar plots, the super scalper, telling us to short. You see, we've got a lower low. Sorry, a lower high. Sorry, let me say that again. A lower high. But we would not have taken that trade because we're hitting the 89, which is very, very strong support. Why did we mark this one up here and take this one? Very simply, it was a second strong test. And also, look at our long-term stochastic. What we had basically was a T10. A T10 is a money on the floor. We did not mark this one up because we we're right up against the 89. We waited. Now, some of this may sound a little confusing initially. And that is why, as our new traders and even as an experienced trader, if you want to guarantee your success, trend trade only. Okay, Stay with the 89. Be a sniper. Okay, Great snipers, just like leaders, are made. Great traders are made. Have a sniper mentality. Just wait. Patience. Because remembering, you only need two 11 tick trades a day. And that's $100 per contract, generally, on a $3,000 account with a 2% risk. Yes, ideally, uh, and like in our institutions, they may have a risk of only 0.2%, 0.3%. But the point is here is you don't need a lot of winning trades to really rake it in. And as you're about to see, um, you really, if you wait for the sweet spot, it's generally not too far around the corner. So we had a couple of losing trades in that area, but that was a very nice winner. Then we have a very, very nice here, T, uh, T10. Now, what's a T10? It's a money on the floor trade. So let me clearly explain this. This is virtually an 89B, an 89 bounce. See how our, our cyan line is rising? That's our 89. We've come down, we've basically tested the support, we've had a paint bar plot, and then another one. Now our entry, remember in our entry for our newer traders, you always wait for your zero lag to confirm the trend as we had it right here. Our experienced traders would have been in here. They're prepared to take a few more risks because they know they're going for higher pips, but a new trader, just wait for that extra rule. It'll keep you out of a couple of extra losing trades and um, it just helps in building your confidence. Okay, so you had a very nice uh, T10 here and then you've got another one right here. Look at your long-term stochastic. It is rising. You've had a pull down. Your short term is flicked up. Thank you very much. Now, then up here, uh, I marked this one up because we're talking about counter trend trades and I've... Um, at this stage, you're talking about we had very thin volume. Uh, we're also waiting for what I call a sweet spot. So we can see here we've coming, we've gone through the pivot. We're going to come down and have a bounce off the pivot. Pivot bounces I generally love, but here with the thin market, you're going to have uh, you've got to keep your stops very very tight and be ready to pull out very quickly. Uh, that is to take profits early. So we can see here we had a very, very nice sum. We had a counter trend trade here. I wasn't, I'm not going to call it nice because it was very, very thin. We did not take it, but we marked it up because we were talking about it. And we had another one, uh, a T1 with the trend. Now, let me explain a T1 with the trend. It's basically a T1 and a C2 all rolled in one. It's a trend trade. You can see here our 89 is in an upward direction. Our channel is an upwards direction. Our We've had a paint bar plot. You can see here our zero lag has turned to cyan and we had an entry on this candle right here. Now, you would should have been out, been very, very wet. Now, I'm not going to say should have because should have, would have, could have here because we're, we've actually got a double top forming and look at this down here. All right, look at our um, our platinum here has rolled over. We're below the zero line. What is that telling me? I've had massive divergence. I'm rolling over. If you had have taken this one here, you would have been stopped in this short. Why? 
our stop I recommend personally on the 133 tick is two ticks above your closest swing high, swing low. And we ticked up, I think it was two or three ticks there. And we marked that up again, just as an example in training. Now, that also then turned into a T10, which is a money on the floor. Let me explain why. Can you see how my long-term stochastic is falling? My short-term has come up and it's rolled over and you would have been in here. Now, your entry was actually triggered there, but you would have waited here for your zero lag to confirm the trade. Thank you very much, and you bank your dollars. Now, here, we've got, what is this? An 89B. Yesterday, we had seven out of eight. I'm not sure how many we've had so far, but your 89 bounces are a bankable standalone trade that you have Oop, bit of a, what's that, what do I say there? The trade, excuse my spelling error there, traders. Um, but it's a standalone trade set up within itself. And then you had another one right here. Now there you didn't get into here. And you're after 11 ticks plus. Yes, you can trail, but I'm uh, more of a scalper. That's more my style. And thank you. I've banked my fit and I'm out. And I had another one right here. Had another entry here. And this is what I mean about the sweet spots. You're uh, in, you're out, you finish for the day. Now, my general target is 200 net per contract. 100, I'm pleased. It takes all the um, uh, pressure off. That is two 11 tick trades. Less your brokerage, it's $100 per contract. Okay. So uh, here, actually, this one here, you did not bank your dollars until here. This one, you bank your dollars up here. Now, let me explain these if we look down here very clearly for you. I have a rising long-term stochastic. My short-term has rolled over and kicked back up. So this is a T10, a money on the floor. This is a common trade setup. Um, I'm not complaining. It's something I've invented. It's been around for as long as the markets have been around, or these indicators have been around, which is stochastics. These are a a staple, uh, a, a standard trade you're going to trade every single day. All the clients I, ch I, I coach, including institutions, uh, those that use are indicated, this is what they, they trade this every day because it's so damn reliable. What you want to see is this long-term stoke oversold or overbought, um, depends where you are, and of course pull down opposite direction, and it's a slingshot. You can see that formation just there, it's a slingshot. Now, up here, what have we got? Well, here we can see our long-term stoke has rolled over and it's collapsing. And look what's happened to my short-term. It's gone up, kicked over, and you had a nice entry. Thank you very much. And uh, we've got our 11 ticks. I think actually that just um, touched 11 ticks. Let me just tell you that there. Uh, closed at uh, 52.50. We had a low there of 50. To, yeah, that was uh, nine ticks, sorry, exactly nine ticks. Now, what I've got here also then, sorry about that noise then, uh, so we've actually broken here the 89. And after you get very strong divergence, you want to be very, very careful of these. So we're below the zero line here. So if we look, we've had a zero line cross here. So this is an area to be very, very cautious on. Uh, we had a low, a low. You can see here, we're lower than there. Now, this would be a scalp trade. When you have a formation that breaks the 89, and if you're breaking the trend, be ready for a quick scalp. Because what is happening here, you can see here our long-term stoke is over, and this is now turning into what? What's it turning into? A T2, a slingshot. Can you see what's happened here? We're now oversold, we've gone way up, we've rolled over, but our entry, we've had a lower high now than here, but our entry was not until this candle. Now, why is that? If you got in here, and this is a good example, by the way, if you got in before the zero lag confirmed the trade on that candle, or this one when you had the confirmation, um, you would have been stopped because you, um, you can see we ticked up a couple of ticks above this little swing high. 
But because you're waiting for your zero lag, which is right there, away you go. Okay, and why did I put that in there? Okay, um, why did I put that there? I'm not sure now. <laughs> oh, now, uh, that's right. The reason I put that in there, um, in real time, if you look at that there, that actually has the effect of a T10. That's right. Okay, so what do we've got? We've got a rising um, uh, long-term stochastic here. And you've also got here your zero lag confirmed, and you kick up. That is a T10 formation. You would have been stopped on that trade. So let me explain why we mark that up in real time. Now, this is, a back, this is the thing you need to consider when you're doing back testing on a strategy. You can look back and go, yes, okay, we had an entry there, 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 there. Um, oh, no, this is perfect um, uh, slingshot just here, etc. It's not until you actually um, uh, mark these up and you, form, and you actually set the trade up in real time, you really notice that you would have been stopped on that trade. So you were stopped on that T10. Now, then you had a winner immediately straight after. Now, you had a little test there of your 89. I remember earlier I said the first test of the 89, support or resistance, uh, be very careful. And here it is here, we finally broke through on the second test. And away it tumbled. Now, what I've marked down here is, um, uh, and once again, this is a note we had about when we're talking um, about counter trend trading, is we really want a two to one minimum return. Now, that's going to keep you in great profits. And you're going to get it every time. But on some of these here, um, when you get these counter trends, and you can see you've pulled down, and it really, the 89 has been heading up. You're going to have a fantastic return. Now, a couple other things here I want you to note. We have what we call anchor charts, which is a higher time frame. I'm always looking towards the 500 and the 1,000 volume on the NASDAQ. And very, very clearly, the 89 was heading up. Most traders, and here's one of the challenges, particularly for the newer traders or the traders that are struggling, is we suffer from uh, something that we call confused knowledge. We have all this knowledge about what we should be doing. Now, we need to chunk it down. And really, you can trade off this one chart alone and when I coach you, we actually remove some of these indicators to break it down very simply until you develop reflex action. But if you want to really confirm the longer term trend, uh, if you have a higher time frame um, set up above or next to your screen, uh, or a longer term EMA on your chart to give you an overall. Now, this is only an 89, so you might have a 134, or, or what I do is I look at some higher time frames. Okay? Now, what I've got here is the 89B. On the 1000 volume, this was actually not a breakthrough on the 89 um, EMA as I've got here, but a very clear 89 EMA bounce. This was, in other words, a total bankable trade every day of the week. We had divergence, uh, and this is a very, very sweet trade. So let's have a look here. Um, you had a winner back here. This turned into a winner. You had then a winner here. You had a loss, a winner, and a very nice winner there as well. Now, what about this one? We didn't mark it up because it had broken down. I had a T11, and I was concerned about this. I'm glad I didn't know because we only got six or seven ticks and it rolled over. That's why we didn't mark it up in real time. Uh, another uh, comment we put up here as we were trading is that when you're back here and rising, you can't see your pivots. So what you want to really do is a lot of chart impact allow you to drag down. You want to be checking to see where your pivots are. And this is really important because we know, and I think I started to talk about it earlier, we generally trade pivot to pivot. And um, this can dramatically increase your returns. That is, I talk about going for 11 ticks, but if I'm bouncing off, I've had a retrace and a bounce off a pivot. This is where you have a much higher target, which I don't want to get into today. That's a whole separate lesson. But we can see, I want you to always be looking where your pivots are. Now, 
I've probably just gone through about 10, 15 things you've got to be looking for. And this is where when I'm coaching, you've got to really, I really break it down. Look, let's look for top five things that you need to consider. And of course, as a new trader or if you've blown your account a number of times, we break it down to one trade setup and of a T1 and a T2, and that's all you trade. And that's bankable. If you're a great sniper, you're just waiting for that kill shot. You've got to have a sniper mentality, which is really important. So let's move along here. Uh, so further along, we had here uh, a T10 setting up here. I've got a, my long-term stochastic is falling, as you can see here. We've bounced off the pivot. We didn't take that Y because it's a counter trend and there was no other real signals for us there. And glad we didn't because it bounced off. And what have we got? We've got a perfect uh, 89 bounce. Why is that? We can see we've bounced off the 89. There it is there. Every day we get these 89 bounces. You can trade these just alone, but just stick to your 89s. And you've got one here. Now your entry was not, once again, if you're following the rules, it was not till there. And look at that, good 20 ticks. Now, what about this here? I've got a, a lower high, slightly, you can see here. Okay, my paint bar. My long-term stochastic is falling. And this, technically speaking, is a T10. Why wouldn't you have taken that? Well, number one, you're in your 89 bounce to begin with and enjoying the nice ride. But secondly, look at your zero lag. Follow your zero lag traders. It's going to keep you out of a lot of nasty trades. Now, up here, we had uh, a very nice T2 signal. Uh, and here, we, our entry was here. Now, there, that was plus 11 maximum. That's all that was good for, was plus 11. Now, as you know, my rules, once I'm up plus 10, I go to break even. Uh, we hit plus 11. Once you hit 11, you want to really get up there. You, you bank a couple of ticks, which is really important. Now, here's what we uh, marked up here. And by this time, uh, I'd been up for about uh, four hours, and our, our training session was uh, just about finishing. And... Uh, I've marked up here as we we're chatting, uh, this is a rounding top. Very, very good chance here that we're going to roll over. Uh, you can see we've got divergence here on our platinum. Notice down here our long-term stoke is up, but notice how I've got a rollover of my short term. And I marked this up as a trade. Now here from there to there, that was only plus nine ticks from there to there. That's why we've got the plus nine there. We kicked up, and what have I got down here? I've got a perfect T10. Now notice, I've still got some room before my uh, um, 89 EMA. So I took this trade uh, live. I uh, shorted 10 contracts here. It was my bedtime. We finished our call. Uh, I jumped in, shorted 10 contracts, and bang, it was in there. Uh, 10 contracts out there, and it was good for 12 ticks there. I got out of 10, my set order, for a perfect T10s. And T10s done correctly are an 85% trade. They're just a, a wonderful trade to take. Now, we then bounced up. Now, over here, and I want to show you this, what happened then for the next um, hour. This is a really good example. So let's have a look, and I'll call these, and I haven't marked these up because I went to bed. So if we look here, we actually had a, let me just scroll back. You'll be able to see this a bit clearer here. So we had a T1. Now, a T1 and a T2 uh, can quite often plot. The T2 was first. That's a slingshot. Now, notice here how it went up. That gave you a perfect slingshot there. Now, note here that you still had um, uh, cyan. You're after magenta. So you would have waited for this candle here, which also made it a T1 because by then, um, but because you know my paint bar does not plot until I get a tick, until it ticks down below the low of this candle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we had both a T1 and a T2 signal. Now, I'd gone to bed at this stage, so I missed this. You would have been stopped because you can see here what happened. It bounced, went up there, tested the pivot, rolled over, then went on its merry way. Now, this is where, traders, you need to learn to hold your nerve. That is, this is a game of probabilities. That is what trading is about. It's not you against other traders. 
the professionals, by the way, which is what we are, we take cash from other traders. But what do, we, what do you do when you fall off a horse? You get straight back on it. What do you do when you fall off the bike? You get back straight, you're back straight on that bike and pedaling again. Likewise, you were stopped on this trade. Your, your stop was two ticks above here, a nice tight stop. And uh, then it rolled over and bang. Yes, I know you might have said, well, we could have had kept our 11, 12 tick stop. We would have been okay. Would have, could have, should have. Here, I always put mine two ticks above. So for me, my rules, I would have been stopped. Maybe you wouldn't have. But the point is, let's mark it up as a loss. Okay. So I had a very nice winner. Winner. Uh, actually, this one here would have been a break even. But then nice winner. This is a real trade here stopped nice winner then what have we got here we have another perfect formation for what a t2 notice here i'm oversold i have a perfect kick up i roll over i get a paint bar tick here but i would have already actually been in this trade before my paint bar plotted for a t1 now why would have i been in this one well on the close of this candle you can see i'm very clear magenta so I've got a downtrend. I'm in this trade. Bang. And look at it collapse. Then we had another one. We had another one right here. Now you may say, look, what about this little one here? It has, you know, I like to see it kick back up above at least a 50% level. About here. Which is what this one did. This is too narrow for me. But there is something else I'd like to point out. Soon I've got your attention. I hope I've got your attention is this. The further away or the further out from the channel we are, I start to get a little nervous here on the shallower pullback. So this is a healthy one because you generally get a pullback back. Now by this time, look at I've got a nice strong trend. My channel is trending down. I'm well under my, my platinum's under the zero line. Nice pullback. There is a lovely um, uh, T2 slingshot trade there. Now, here is a trade I want to point out, which is a, what I call a 90 percenter. Now, a 90 percenter is where you have a divergence on your platinum, as we've got here. Okay, and we can see we've got divergence on the platinum, a higher high on price. Okay, and it's in the direction of my 89. So I love these. Now, here, what about this one? Why wouldn't we have been in and stopped on this? Look, you've got one, two, three, four, five. You've got six candles before you finally roll over. Time is not your friend when it comes to trading. Remember, what we want to see is some action when we enter a trader, when we have a setup fairly early. Once you start to get four, five, six candles formed, uh, you want to be really cautious on those. There's another reason why I'd be very nervous here. What have I got here? Some very, very strong divergence. So what you want to see is a secondary signal. Now, I don't want to get too complicated for my newer traders watching um, uh, this recording today. But where you get such your market stalled, you want to really stand aside. Remember, there's no need to hurry. You've got How many trades have we had so far? You've got, they're coming thick and fast. So you're waiting here and your entry was right here, which was um, a nice double top. You had um, a perfect, it's also, what else is it? It's also a pivot bounce. Gone up, tested the pivot and bang. Now, let me quickly talk to you about logical targets. What's one of our targets? The next pivot. That's why earlier I said you want to find out where your pivots are. Now, for those traders that follow my, that follow my trading plan, uh, you would have banked your 11 ticks there. It was good for actually about, uh, was it good for nearly 20 ticks? Now, just before I close off, um, uh, it's an hour or so before market closes, but I just want to quickly talk about these trades here. Now, what about this T1? You can see here, we've got the markets rising very, very strongly here, but we've got a market, we've got the market turning at 6 a.m. as it traditionally does here in my time, but here I've got a signal, and you might say, well, look, what about the T10? Now, hang on, because we've got a rising long-term stochastic. What about this one? Well, here, of course, you wouldn't have taken this short because my zero lag didn't agree. What about this T10? Why don't we take this one? 
Where are we traders? Right on the 89 EMA. Remember what I said, unless you've got a good gap between your EMA and your trade entry for a T10, you don't take the first one. What else do we have? We've got a pivot straight above it. Stand aside and what happened a couple of minutes later was this. And a beautiful little double top. You bounced off a pivot here, come down, you bounced again, then we turned magenta and away we went for a really nice ride. So let me run you through quickly, sorry, <laughs> um, a little tired actually. <laughs> let me run you through this very quickly. Nice double top, falling platinum, nice entry. This one didn't qualify. Why? Because my zero lag kept me out of this. And this is what I mean traders, by staying and relying on the zero lag, it really keeps you out of a lot of losing trades. Up here, bounce off the 89, lovely. Bounce off the pivot, lovely again, but my zero lag did not um, turn magenta till there. Now it actually turned back again there, but I was already in here, and away it went. So traders, um, I gave you a huge amount of information. Once again, um, and as I spoke about there, where are we here? Back there, um, that was a 550, about 500 odd net trade there. Uh, my target generally is four of those a day. Uh, um, I'm not going to go into the European market, but of course, as you know, that's my, my main market of choice of an evening here. It suits me here in Australia. Um, uh, and by the way, a lot of traders say, why do I, I teach when a lot of traders come here and I do one-on-one -on -one with them? And they watch me trade live. Um, I don't generally like trading live in front of a trader. Why? You need to focus. Now, if you're a sniper, if you've got someone there chatting away to you and you're explaining how, the rules of how to be a sniper, of course not. You're totally focused. If you want to truly succeed and gain financial independence traders as a professional, if you want to become epic, learn to focus. Get rid of all distractions around you. Stop watching the TV. Turn off CNBC, etc. Focus on this. Look how many trades we get. You only need it between two and four trades on the 133 a day, and you're going to get wealthy. And it's fun. And you can be pack up your bags and you finish within an hour or two. You go and knock off four winning trades in a row, which you see here, we have day in, day out. Um, uh, you might be on there for maybe 90 minutes to two hours, and let's assume you have one or two trades, a losing trade. You might be finished, wrapped up in two, uh, in two hours. For the ES traders, um, uh, of course, you, you get uh, the T2s, your T1s for your YM trade. Of course, it kicks butt on the YM. I love the YM trading. It's a little bit, uh, you don't have as much volume. Now, the other thing is there is every market has its personality. Here I am, sorry if I'm going on about this, but little things come to mind as I'm chatting. Um, every market has its personality, and that's why I say become a specialist in your market. Become a specialist with the trade setups you're going to trade. Remember, you only need one to three trade setups and ignore everything else. Otherwise, you get confused knowledge, information overload. The other thing there is, um, is focus on a market. Don't try to trade three or four markets unless you're trading daily candles or maybe six hourly or, or whatever. Because you're going to suffer from confused knowledge. It's too much to look at. All right. So you want to become epic, world class. So I am going to wrap up. Please, at the start of a video, you can get me directly on my email address. Those traders that have, I haven't answered your emails, I'm sorry, I'll get back to you within the next 24 hours. I'm being that busy with training commitments and being away and whatever. Uh, so please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Traders, um, make it uh, another great uh, trading day tomorrow, and I'll see you within the next, probably the next, another uh, training video in the next 48 hours. Thank you.